Welcome back to the Instant Impact Podcast. I'm your host, Elise Archer, and I have such a powerhouse guest for you on the show today. Many of you will probably already know her name, and if you don't, uh, you're going to be so glad that you found out about her here. So my guest today is Alexa Carlin. And a little bit of background, if you're not familiar, she's a nationally renowned public speaker and the founder and CEO of Women Empower X. So she hosts these incredible conferences for women um, across the country and is doing this at a really young age, but bringing together literally thousands of women into the same room to help inspire them to pursue their passions and go to the next level in their career and life. Um, she's an expert public speaker. She speaks a ton for young audiences and colleges and universities, helping to empower them as well. And, you know, I'd heard her name uh, just through my network a number of times and then finally got connected with her uh, through a mutual friend and was so excited to have her on the show today. And you're going to love what she has to share. I learned so much from her. And I think some of the biggest things that I took away and what you can look forward to are first, how being told she had a 1% chance to live uh, when she was in her early 20s, how that changed her life. And you'll hear a lot of that theme throughout the conversation today. She shares how she overcomes self-doubt to tackle and achieve incredible results. One of the things you'll learn about Alexa is she's an action taker. She gets stuff done. She gets things done quickly and takes massive action. Um, but like all of us, she overcomes self-doubt along the way. So how she does that now, one other thing that we get into, which I think is really interesting, and I know a number of you are in the public speaking space or wanting to build a brand in public speaking. And uh, as we record, it is June of 2020, and the speaking world has changed dramatically. And so I wanted to get her advice because she is a speaker. She runs events. Her whole business model has been in-person events. She also coaches public speakers. Um, I wanted to get her advice on what in the world should you be focused on right now if you are a public speaker. So she gave some really, really, uh, I think, tangible, actionable things you can be doing if you are a speaker or if you want to be a speaker to actually take advantage of what's going on right now in the world, um, not, in a, not in an advantageous way, but just to really maximize the time that you have right now. And then Final thing is you're going to learn the key mindset that she has that's helped her achieve so much success in so little time. And gosh, I, I loved this conversation and I'm so excited to introduce you to her. Um, I will say there were some, a couple of Wi-Fi kind of blips. Uh, it is worth powering through them. I promise you. Um, and I appreciate your patience with that right now as so many of us are at home recording. I think it's it's kind of hashtag 2020. Sometimes Wi-Fi is not as, as stable as we would like it. So thank you for your patience because there are a couple times when the sound drops, um, but it's going to be worth it. I promise to listen to the conversation and to learn from Alexa. So with that, uh, let's, let's not waste any more time. Let's welcome Alexa Carlin to the Instant Impact Podcast. Alexa, I have to tell you, I am so excited to have you on the Instant Impact podcast today. I think, you know, even just in the process of prepping for the show, I feel like I have up-leveled a lot of my thinking about what's possible in a short amount of time and uh, just making a greater impact in the world. And you've clearly done that. So I'm, I know we're going to have such a fun conversation today and um, just get so much out of this. So thank you so much for being here with us today and uh, sharing your wisdom. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, you know, I, I want to get into it because I think one of the really interesting things that you share in your story is how a near-death experience changed your life. So can you tell us a little bit about, gosh, I mean, when people hear that, it's like, they want to know what happened, how did it transform you? So take us back to that time and, um, and tell us what happened. Yeah, I mean, it changed everything. So I've been an entrepreneur since I was 17 years old, always with the mission to make a difference in at least one person's life every single day. And so 
I, I mentioned that because I was already, you know, working on using entrepreneurship as a vehicle to make an impact. And, and in college, I was running my second business by then, which was a blog um, to help instill confidence in young girls and women because I needed confidence myself. And then uh, senior year, a few months before I was ready to graduate, out of nowhere, I got really sick. What happened was a bacteria got into my bloodstream, started killing all of my organs, my body went into septic shock, and I was induced into a medical coma, given a 1% chance to live. Uh, so definitely changed everything. Wow. I was in a coma for six days and in the ICU for a total of 10. And during that time, I you know, had so many different vivid uh, imagery, um, hallucinations, experiences, whatever you want to call it, that really showed me the power of the mind and the, and just what is possible in a way. Um, it was a very difficult experience. And, and what was even more difficult was six months after this, I, I still was able to graduate college on time, moved to New York City, got my dream job working at InStyle Magazine. So I always thought I wanted to work in the fashion industry. And then all of a sudden I started getting sick again and I was actually diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, mm. which was, you know, I had so many different, um, I had nine different bags of antibiotics pumping in my body for a very long period of time. And so it destroyed my whole entire gut system. And that has been the hardest thing to deal with, um, which that experience led me to share my story and kind of everything I'm doing today, because what I, what that is, it's an autoimmune. So it's chronic. There's no cure for it and you have to learn how to live with it. Mm. Um, so that journey has been a tough one for sure. Wow. And I understand you wrote a, a cookbook during the time you were at home recovering. Yes. Yeah. So, you. um, I don't know if you could see it right there. <laughs> there oh, you go. I love it. Yeah. The yes, lighting's yes. not the best, but, uh, yeah. so yeah, because I was trying to heal myself through food. I mean, I, mm. I went to every single type of doctor, Eastern, Western, integrative, holistic, and nothing was working. And so I decided to take a little bit um, from every uh, piece of advice that I got. They say health is like the one industry where everybody can have an opposite opinion. Right. It's very confusing. And, uh, and I decided, you know, I'm going to heal myself through food, through, um, you know, mindset and it was a mix of medicine and that. And I went completely vegan and gluten-free for a period of time. And of course, I'm, I, like my body has changed since then. So I'm a big believer in listen to your body and, mm. and not one diet fits all. Uh, but that was a way where I was able to make light in a, in a dark situation um, because there was a period of like eight months where I was quarantined. I could not leave my house. I was too sick to even walk my dog outside. Yeah. And so I couldn't eat the foods I wanted to eat. I couldn't go out with friends. I couldn't do anything. Um, and when you're 22, 23 years old, it's very, I mean, at any age, it's very difficult. So me and my mom started making these different recipes, trying to find food that I could digest and uh, I was turning like my favorite recipes into vegan and gluten free with ingredients. And I ended up just taking photos, posting on social and everyone's like, you should write a cookbook. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> you said, sure. Why not? Right? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's a couple of things that I want to ask you about from that, because I think one is, I know you've got a, a, you seem to have such a strong mindset when it comes to going through a challenge, but I also can imagine in that moment, you know, there were probably days where it was like, you just, you wanted to like curl up in a hole and die, right? Like that has to be so challenging. I mean, right now, as many of us are listening, we're, we're in quarantine or we've been in quarantine, but it's different when everybody is versus when it's just you, mm -hmm. that's radically different. How do you, what, what's the mindset that you've adopted to help you transform a challenge into something that actually does good for other people? That's a good question. So there's two ways to look at something. You can look at it as something that happened to you, or you can look at it as something that happened for you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I took th- that took a long time to learn. <laughs> Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But once I started to adopt that mindset that this had to happen for a reason, I started to go on this journey of curiosity. So curious to what may happen if I don't give up, if I take one more action step, if I try to think one more positive thought, do one more thing. And so that led me to really finding the courage, finding the strength to turn this obstacle into an opportunity. So that's kind of a different perspective in the sense of when I was trying to heal myself, uh, I was going to all, because of course you need to heal your body physically as well as mentally, because I was going through a lot of post-traumatic stress during this time, so afraid I was going to get that sick again. And that's obviously no way to live. But when I was going to all these different like conferences when I was healthy enough to see motivational speakers or see healers or, um, you know, read different books. It was very challenging because while they were all amazing, they all spoke on the past. Here's Mm. what I went through, right? They went through addiction or a health issue or child abuse or whatever it may be. And then here's what they did to overcome it. And here's how you can too. And that is very, valid and useful advice for someone that's overcoming something that's in their past. But what happened for me, my near-death experiences in my past, but my autoimmune and what I was dealing with will never be in my past because it is something I live with all the time. So that's when I was like, well, I, I, I need to share my story to show like, here's all the stuff I'm still going through, all the challenges, but I'm still chasing after my dreams. And so can you. And I think that's a very powerful message, especially for everything that's happening right now. It's like, don't wait for your life to change. Um, You must change your own life. And we're always going to have obstacles come our way. There's usually very short periods of time where everything's going smoothly. And usually if everything's going smoothly, like you're not really living life to the fullest. Mm. It's kind of this weird, um, you know, fact about life. But with that, if we're always trying to overcome an obstacle, we're spending our entire life thinking that we need to overcome something in order to be happy, in order to get what we want, in order to live the life of our dreams. But if you shift that mindset and see how to shift the obstacle into an opportunity versus try to overcome it, then you can live in a a state of joy or in state of gratitude with the obstacle while you're going through it. Wow. Gosh, that's so powerful because, you know, as you talk, I think about it's so easy for us to make excuses like I, you know, I'll do it when this isn't going on or I'll, you know, I've got to wait and fix this problem or, um, and it's like, you have built this incredible company. You've created Women in Power X. You're leading these conferences around the world that, and doing it while you are still dealing with an autoimmune disease. And I think, Uh, I mean, I didn't even know that about you going into, I didn't know that was something you were actively dealing with right now. And it's so powerful because it's so easy to, it's just so easy to put off and prolong our dreams and say, when things are perfect, when things are going well, I'll Mm -hmm. do it. But you're right. There's so much more power when you're doing it because you are called to, not because everything is perfect, because it's never going to be like that. Right. Um, it's never going to be like that. Is that, I was curious about how, you know, having that 1% chance to live shaped your perspective. I would imagine that's part of it, right? Is, is that Mm -hmm. now it's like you take advantage of every day at any other mindset shifts or anything else that it's really taught you or made you think about in terms of how you run your life and how you tackle every day. Definitely. I I mean, there's two main things that I learned, I would say years later, but it was from that experience that it taught me. Um, One is to focus on the things that you do have control over. Mm. So when I was in the coma, actually when I woke up out of the coma, I still had a mask on my face, a tube down my throat, and I was hooked up to nine different bags of antibiotics. So I couldn't move, breathe, or speak on my own, but I, I was aware of my surroundings. And so my mind was still working. And I remember like I was in so much physical pain and all the sounds of all the, you know, machines going off. I mean, I was living on, I I wasn't able to breathe on my own. There's so much going on. And I was like, I can not go on 
and a day, let alone another minute in this pain. So I had to shift my focus on something else. So I remember picturing my mind to be this pure, healthy pink and the rest of my body was black and rotting away. Mm -hmm. And I would just push down this healthy pink color to the rest of my body to try and heal it. Now, I never read anything about this beforehand. I've always been a believer in like the law of attraction, but never to this extent. All I had control over. Now, learning that now for my business and, and career and life, there's so many things we don't have control over, yet we try to control them. And that's what makes us miserable. That's what makes us depressed. That's what makes us sad. Even the, the pandemic or the economy or your job, whatever is going on, there's, you can't control if someone else is going to fire you. You can't control it, when this pandemic's going to end. You can't control you know, if you're going into a job interview, if that person's going to like you. But what you can control for example, in the job interview sense, you go into a job interview, you go to pitch a stakeholder, an investor. So many people are focusing on, I hope they like me. I hope they pick me. I wonder who the other candidates are. All those things you can't control, but you can control how you show up, how much education, how much knowledge you have about the person, about the company, about the role, about your own industry. You have control over what you wear, how confident you are. And so all of those things, like if you shift your focus, on all the things you have control over, you are not only like allowing yourself to feel more confident, but you're pushing your energy towards the right things that it's going to help you move forward. And in the long, like it's in the short term, it's going to make you feel happier. Yeah. Because nobody likes to feel helpless. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I, I want to clarify one thing because we had a, um, the Wi-Fi broke up a little bit there when you were talking. So when you were in the hospital and you were visualizing the healthy pink brain and pushing it to the rest of your body, that was when we had a, a little um, hiccup in, in internet. Do you feel like that helped with the healing and the transformation, like doing that visualization and actually See, like, tell 100%. us a little bit more about that. So I'm on a side note, I like every day I'm doing my Joe Dispenza meditations and I'm like, like yeah, I know, learned so about I him afterwards. This. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Like, it would have been good to know Joe, but you, you did it without even knowing. So yeah. yeah. So, so, so that definitely, that. I mean, my, so the doctors told my mom, call your family. She has 24 hours. Oh. And for a few days they kept on shaking. I mean, this is from my mom, what she told me, cause I don't remember, but they kept on shaking their head and you know, nothing was working. Uh, they were trying to figure out none of the antibiotics were killing this bacteria and it was going mm -hmm. through my whole system. And it, it was something that like shifted after like day three or something, all of a sudden something started working. Mm -hmm. But I a hundred percent believe that whether it was my mindset that helped cure me or it was the mindset that helped give me the strength to continue. So there's two parts of it. Yeah. And I, I think you can believe whatever you want to believe, but th there is so much, I mean, just in my own journey, so much evidence to how your mindset is directly correlated to your health. Your happiness is direct, directly correlated to your health. I mean, one of the ways that I finally got healthier from not being in uh, a flare for years of my autoimmune is through happiness. Mm. And it's hard. Cause like, I'm like, I'm not a stressful person, but I have a very stressful job, but you, you internalize stress differently. You sometimes think you're happy, but you're really not. And that all directly correlates with how you feel. Yes. I mean, you, you just think about the feelings and your feelings directly correlate with your, your health. So a hundred percent. I, I believe that. Oh my gosh. That's, that's so powerful. And I think for, for several of us, many of us, myself included right now, it's interesting, just 2020, I, I never considered myself to be like in the school of health. I was always pretty healthy. I, that wasn't mm -hmm. something I was focused on in this year. It's like this health stuff has just started coming up that I'm now actively dealing with. So um, I appreciate you sharing that because I think for many of us right now, stuff is coming to the surface that maybe we hadn't dealt with or we haven't been aware of before and for I mean it's it's everything right it's it's race it's injustice for some of us it's health it's mm -hmm. all this but so but knowing how much control we have over 
our outcomes and the power of our mindset and using setting our intentions to um, to control our experience is just it's powerful. So you've just helped me because I'm on my own journey there too. So thank you for that. Um, you know, the other thing I want to ask, I want to ask no, you. I yeah, yeah. I have like a million questions for you, but I, I do know you have such a strong background too in the speaking world with the conferences that you host and you are a public speaker and you've got a public speaking program. Uh, I think it's called Be a Public Speaker as your signature program. And so you are, you're great at this work. And I'm curious because a lot of our audience is in the speaking world and, and either is wanting to become a speaker or wanting to elevate their speaking career. And I know you've got great advice for them. And I also want to frame it up with what's going on in the world right now, <laughs> given mm -hmm. the fact that as we record this, it's end of June, 2020, uh, people aren't sure about, are there going to be conferences going on the rest of the year? Like what's happening? So what would be, what are some of your thoughts or maybe advice for how someone can be thinking about building a speaking career right now, given the what's so of our situation? Yeah, that's been definitely a shift. So my entire business is in-person events. I'm, I travel as a public speaker and I host large conferences. So it's definitely been a big shift. And while we were working on digital um, aspects and connecting our community digitally. Our, our main focus has always been the in-person connection up until this point. So uh, the thing though is speaking is never going to go away. And I think there's actually been a lot more people that have had the opportunity to grow and actually practice their skill of public speaking through the virtual climate. So I've actually um, gotten paid virtual gigs since all this happened. I've done a lot of um, free gigs since this has happened. There's been so many different virtual conferences going on. So regardless, Public speaking, I believe, is the number one skill that will only help you in all areas of your life. Uh, whether you're, you run your own business or you work for a Fortune 500 company, uh, it's something that can help influence others to work with you, to buy from you, to partner with you, to invest in you. That is the, the power of public speaking. And then if you know the business side of it, then you can make it a, a career where you're either speaking to represent a company at like say tech conferences and you are a marketing director and now you're building a personal brand. So it makes you irreplaceable in that field and in that industry, um, or it allows you to market your products, your services, your events, and you speak for free with the goal of, uh, you know, attracting a new community to your, um, to buy from you or work with you, um, get, become a client of yours, or you get paid to speak. And sometimes it's a, all of a mix. Like I have a mix of, of, of it all. It's kind of the difference between what I teach platform versus keynote platform speakers are speaking to, have a goal of selling something. They're still offering tons of value. But for example, uh, Les Brown is a platform speaker. Uh, Grant Cardone is a platform speaker. Um, and then a keynote speaker will be like when I get paid to speak at universities. They're paying me a set fee. I'm not, you know, trying to sell anything. Mm -hmm. um, both are, can inspire, entertain, motivate. And the power of, you know, using this time to grow your speaking business is going to be so influential and so impactful to when the economy and the world gets back. Because what's happening is, especially since we're at home for a longer period of time than anyone could have imagined, is people are getting into this repetition. There's nothing that new going on, right? You can't go to these networking events. You can't really travel. It's like, how many times can I take a selfie in the same room? It's, you know, you go on Instagram. <laughs> <You'd be surprised. laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying like you go on Instagram and it's like nothing really new there. It's yeah. usually pe like people are showcasing their life and there's not that much going on, but the people that are staying on top of it, continuing to, you know, um, do videos or podcasts from their home, um, showcase behind the scenes of their office, or just put out awesome content that's helping people. Those are the people that are going to be first in mind mm. when, you know, in-person events start happening again. So I think it's really, um, use, it's really powerful to use this time to 
kind of have an internal season, meaning educate yourself, work on your systems, uh, fix your speaker reel or your speaker page, really, um, you know, learn how to make it a full fledged business or, uh, a marketing, um, strategy. I mean, public speaking is the number one marketing vehicle I've used to grow my business. But if you use this time to create a real strategy in place, I mean, I, I personally believe people will skyrocket afterwards. Yeah. It's, it's such a good point you know, and, um, I'm working with a, a number of clients in the speaking space right now. And it's, it's like, yeah, this is, we're going to accept what's going on. And this is a great time, like you said, to double down on your assets, your materials, is your speaker kit in place, is your speaker demo reel um, up to date. And so for you, from your perspective, I'm hearing a couple of key pieces of advice for somebody. One is just kind of embrace the pause and work on polishing your craft. Um, would you say like, are you seeing people booking speakers for 2021 right now? Or is it like, should we be going out trying to get gigs, trying to get virtual gigs or really just kind of hunker in and, and focus on our brands? What are you seeing just in the speaking world in general? That's a good question. I uh, actually just had a meeting with my agency that books my university gigs. And for example, every market and every industry is going to be different. Yeah. So for the university uh, school wise, they have budget cuts. They are not sure what's happening fall semester. So I had a lot of gigs that got postponed from spring to fall. And now what we're seeing, like I just got, I was supposed to speak at the University of Montana in August of this year. And they just po uh, postponed it till August, 2021, mm -hmm. but they booked it. So it's still like a gig, but it's now in 2021, yeah. but there are other ones where I've postponed fr from, or in the beginning it was postponed, but now they're looking to make it a virtual event in the fall. Mm -hmm. So there are still events taking place, industry, for example, um, regarding some other big conferences, most of them have been postponed or canceled and a lot of them have budget cuts, but I would be thinking about the industry. Like if you work in the tech industry or you have uh, a signature talk that's focused on people that, um, are in tech, women in tech, whatever it may be, then that industry has been on the, on the rise since mm. coronavirus. So I think right now you can, if they have a date booked for spring 2021 for their events, you could easily pitch them, but keep in mind the economy and the state of the industry that you're pitching before you pitch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, it's smart to be thinking about, right? It's just being, it's thinking about what's going on with the times. How can you pivot? Um, and then this is just, it's interesting to me. One of the things I've seen one of my clients do really well, who, um, most of his business was as a keynote speaker is he's offering webinars now and he's, they're paid mm -hmm. webinars and they're to, um, a lot of the corporations he was booked to come in and speak for, and he's crushing it. He's actually having his best, <laughs> best ones ever. It, it required a repositioning. Awesome. Yeah. He's got a webinar demo reel now. And so he's, but he's moved quickly, which I think is, um, is a key there. A couple final questions for you. And then, uh, then I'm going to let you go. And I so appreciate this because this has been so helpful. You just looking at your background and your career. Um, one of the things that I admire most is that you seem to just take action on stuff. And I know for so many of us, we have these ideas and inspirations and we're like, wow, oh, you know, we let self, we can let self doubt get in the way, or we can, uh, just hesitate on taking action. And then before you know it, someone else has gone and done it. How do you get past self-doubt? Is that something that you have struggled with? And if so, how do you overcome it? Or it's just, it's incredible to me what you've accomplished in a short amount of time. And I'm curious how you manage any sort of self-doubt and, and don't let it get in your way. Good question. Uh, so I want to first be clear that I am just like anyone else listening that I have self-doubt. There's, I've dealt with imposter syndrome. When I was growing up, I had zero confidence. I wouldn't even like raise my hand in class because I didn't want people to look at me, judge me. I didn't want to ask something stupid. So I went through all of that. But what I realized from a very well young age in high school, when I was working to become a leader when I started my first, like I wanted to turn my first idea into a reality. I saw how confidence, low confidence 
held me back. And I saw that you need to have confidence in order to grow. I mean, if you look at any person that you look up to, any role model, whether you know them personally or not, two things that help them achieve success is having confidence and energy. Or sometime I hated going to networking events, for example. Hated, hated, hated it. I would be the person in the corner pretending to be on your phone because I would be like alone. And I realized networking is imperative to growth. Mm -hmm. So I, if I had to go by myself, because one thing I learned is what makes me feel confident. Sometimes the clothes I'm wearing makes me feel confident. If I'm with someone else that's a friend or my assistant or mom or sister, that makes me feel more confident to introduce myself. So you have to learn what makes you feel confident in order to hack the confidence system, as I like to call it. But another thing is uh, I would walk in and say, you know what? I'm just going to pretend I'm the most confident person in the room. Mm. I'm just going to pretend. And believe it or not, it, after a while, you start to feel that, that confidence. So I really has, have spent the past, I would say, six years working on the skill of confidence. Mm. And one other thing that, I, that helps me become more confident as well as many others is achievement. Think about the last time you achieved something. How good did you feel about yourself? And that could be even a small little achievement like, oh, I woke up an hour earlier today. Or I, I went to the gym four days a week, whatever it is, notice those, set those goals for yourself because that's going to help fuel your confidence. And when you feel really overwhelmed, like there's so much to do, 